you know, he's where I got my hurt season hat from AJ, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's pretty special. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lil Brunson back at you with the back at you, and I'm the best reporter on the Eagles. Listen, before we get into the meat and potatoes, I got to let you guys know, please take advantage. Take advantage of the massive Black Friday sale for all the Hurt Season merch, all the Lord Brunson merch, all of that stuff. Use code BF91. You know what I'm saying? Black Friday 9 and 1. Get your merch. Get the savings off, man. Listen, I still got the snapbacks. I still got the buckets. But it's all about the beanies. It's getting real cold. Make sure you go out there and you do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Stay warm. Represent the team. Because we got a goodie coming up for Sunday Night Football. Now, when I broke down the schedule uh, early in the season, I talked about the Philadelphia Eagles. You know what I mean? Potentially looking at this schedule situation different. I looked at it in terms of elite quarterbacks and who we have to play. There wasn't a lot of elite quarterbacks on the menu this year, thus making me believe that we would be able to outduel a lot of quarterbacks and our defense that we put together in the offseason would be able to, you know, dismantle a lot of quarterbacks. A lot of people had this game against the Green Bay Packers coming to Philadelphia circled as a loss for us on the schedule, but boy, they won't be wrong about this one. They're going to be wrong about this one. Let's talk about how the Philadelphia Eagles are going to win this game. First of all, I would like to point out that the Philadelphia Eagles about a week ago now or something like that closing on in the week has signed the arch nemesis of Aaron Rodgers and Ndamukong Sue. Aaron Rodgers and Ndamukong Sue, they just are real competitive against each other. I'm pretty sure it's nothing personal off the football field, but does Sue want to get to Aaron Rodgers? Absolutely. They've been going at it within that division for a very, very long time, so I expect the defensive front of the Philadelphia Eagles to be up to the challenge and making sure Aaron Rodgers is uncomfortable as possible. That's the first thing that I would do. That's the first key. Get into the get into the space of Aaron Rodgers. Make him uncomfortable because we know what they're going to do. They're going to try to get the ball out of their hand as fast as possible. And then they're going to try to get us close to the line of scrimmage. And then they're going to try to use play action. Being disciplined is definitely, definitely, definitely key in this situation. Being disciplined is key in this situation. So being disciplined and knowing that Aaron Rodgers can make almost every throw, well, every throw known to man for real, for real. But he got some young guys in the backfield. And we got some old veterans who are up to the challenge and shutting those young guys down. I'm excited for this one, man. You know what I mean? Aaron Rodgers... Jalen Hurts, who was making a case for being an MVP at a 9-1 season. You know what I mean? The offense has been stalling a little bit for the Philadelphia Eagles. You are missing Dallas Goddard. You know what I'm saying? We won it no so far without Dallas Goddard. I look to continue that trend. Um, A.J. Brown, you know what I mean? I want to get him to a better start. I believe the start was there for A.J. Brown. But as you'll see in the second half of this video, where I talked to Trey Thomas about, you know, what he seen last week and things of that nature, you know, it was a lot of penalties from the tight end position that brought a lot of big games back for the Philadelphia Eagles. I expect us to try to get Smitty involved. I expect us to not change much of what we do on the defensive side of the ball, but that Green Bay Packers team somehow rises to the occasion. You know what I mean? They felt like they had to beat Dallas. I feel like they feel like their backs are against the wall in this game. It's the best record in the National Football League. We're getting everybody's best fight. And Aaron Rodgers' best fight is a fight worth preparing for. So we got to prepare smart. We got to be, you know, di diligent about this one. I don't see the run being a factor for the Green Bay Packers because I absolutely am in awe still of what Linval Joseph and Ndamukong Sue was able to do fresh off the streets for the Philadelphia Eagles. So I'm not really worried about the run being a factor in this one. I'm worried about the defense. I'm worried about the discipline of the linebackers. I'm worried about the discipline of the secondary. So, you know what I mean? Let me know what you think in the comments about that. And without further ado, let's get into this mojo weekend. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Let's talk to my guy, Trey Thomas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what it is. It is a mojo Wednesday. Right in time, you know, getting ready for the Thanksgiving holiday. I got the one and only big homie, Trey Thomas, in the building. We're going to be talking to you guys about some mojo stuff, and we're going to get into this Sunday night football matchup with the Philadelphia Eagles and the Green Bay Packers. Trey, how you feeling? Oh, I'm fantastic, man. I'm just hanging out at my studio, Pino's Palette, and working on a couple paintings. It's a beautiful day, man, getting ready for Thanksgiving, you know, so it's just a nice Yeah, day. it's definitely, definitely a good day. I see you changed the setup. You painted that one in the background? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, that's crazy. Like yeah, just one of the different, you know, something that came in and worked on this morning, you know, just something to kind of try out, something I like, you know, it's, it's, it's fun for me. 
No, yeah, that's, that's real good, Brooke. I got to come grab something off you, spruce the place up a little bit. That looked nice right there. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> but, but, yo, so we didn't get to talk about the loss on Monday night. I was on vacation, fortunately slash unfortunately, you know, due to the loss yeah. I saw. But, yeah, we didn't get to talk about that too much. Um, What was your, what was your takes on that, man? I know a lot of people have been putting a, a massive emphasis on the run game. But, you, you know, how was you feeling coming off of that loss versus how you felt the way we, you know, responded to the losing? Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, it looked like they got punched in the mouth. You know, you knew that right now, I think a couple teams have shown that, all right, this is the way you want to attack the Eagles. You want to be able to run the ball on them. And that's what Washington did. I mean, they just came down there, buckled up your chin strap, and we're just going to go out there and get three, four yards every time. And they just pounded the rock down the field. When you, when you go back and you look at all the runs that they had, and now you only had one run, go over 11, go 11 yards, that shows you what's going on right there. And then the same thing happened in Indy. All right, run the ball, run the ball. And that's one of the situations that the Eagles have been struggling with stopping the run. I did feel like in the Indy game, though, we put an emphasis on stopping the run. I feel like that's when Indomitian Sue and, and Linval Joseph might have got the terminologies down pat. They got their feet under them. You know, they didn't play in a while. You know, Jonathan Taylor only had 20 yards in the fumble in the second half of that game. So I do feel real optimistic going forward about the run. But let's get into some mojo talk, though. So okay. we, lose, we lose our guy, you know, one of the best tight ends in the game, Monday Night Football, during that loss, during that us getting punched in the mouth, as you say. And um, yeah. who's going to step up? Who are you looking at investing in that you think should be the guy? Cause I'm, I'm me personally, I'm. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. I'm saying I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring out who's going to be that guy. Man, you know what? When you look at the depth chart, and that's what I'm looking at right now. Jack Stoll is the guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like he's the one that's next up in line. I know a lot of people are kind of on the bridge, on the, you know, on the fence with him. But if he's the guy, I say go, go ahead and put him out there. Let's see what he can do. You know, yeah. he's the guy. You know, he's had some catches throughout the season, a couple times here and there. But find, see what he can do. You know, you never know what you have until you give him a try. Yeah, and, and you being, a, you know, one of the best offensive tech, one of the best offensive linemen, you know what I mean, that we've had, you know, in Philadelphia Eagles history, how important is it for a tight end to be in sync with the offensive line from your perspective? Because we did have a lot of penalties, you know what I mean, that killed yeah. a lot of drives, and they all came from the tight end position well, in the Indy to, game. Yeah, you need them to be in line just because of when it comes to combination blocks, making sure that you're working up to the linebacker, that you're not getting pushed around. There were a couple of times when that happens, when you have that crashing defensive end that's coming crashing on the backside, that they're going to have to hold it down and be able to keep that backside block. Or when it comes to combination blocks on the front side, being able to know, all right, I need to move up to the second level or I have to stay on the defensive end so that the offensive tackle can work up to the second level. So it's extremely important when it comes to combination blocks. Now, they don't really, in pass blocks, they get into some of the pass protection, but we really don't do six-man protection like that, where we have an yeah. extra a tight end that stays in, unless it's like a play action. And then, that's, I mean, you just got to hold your own. Yeah, I, I agree. I think we're in a unique situation because I think the tight ends on our depth chart right now, they all give you a small piece of what Dallas Goddard provided. Dallas Goddard can catch, he can run routes, he can block. I think the three guys that we're going to be mixing in there, they do some of what Dallas Goddard does, but like I said, Dallas Goddard does all of it. So if it yeah. was one guy that you would put some money in on Mojo this this week or until Dallas Goddard got back, would it be Jack Stahl? Yeah, you got to go ahead and go stall. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. got to go, you got to go stall. Because he's the one that's on the depth chart. And he's the one that's there. Let's see how he goes. Yeah, yeah, I agree wholeheartedly with that. So um, running backs, man, are you are you looking at, you know, a lot, a lot of people are kind of down on game ball from the temperature that I'm getting from the fan base as of late. You know, people are expecting more in terms of a big body back. We don't have that on the roster. So, you know, any smart, any other smart investments on the offensive side of the ball? You know, A.J. Brown has been down on the last couple of weeks, I guess, in terms of numbers or what people expect from him. Overall, he's been solid this season. Uh, Devontae Smith, I think he's still due for that breakout game, one or two more breakout games in the season. Uh, any other smart investments that you're looking at? I think Boston Scott as well. You know, I know we've been right. talking about it a lot. You know, as the season continues, Boston Scott is going to get more reps. And I think that that's someone that you can get in low that you know his production is going to increase as the season continues. And especially if they're feeling a certain type of way with Gainwell, you know Boston Scott is that guy. He runs very physical in between the tackles. He can be that short yardage back. He's not a big 
a uh, big off um, running back, but he's powerful and he can get you get you what you need between the tackles. I agree with that. And I did also see Boston Scott coming in a little bit on punt return. So he's being used more and more throughout yes. different spectrums in terms of, you know, a specialty guy. You know, I struggle with the punt return of the Philadelphia Eagles or special teams in general. You know, um, I'm not the biggest fan of Covey right now, but I, I guess he's been holding on to the ball. I mean, in a perfect situation, do you see that changing with Boston Scott probably being that guy getting more or even you, putting the Quez Watkins back there? I mean, you know, I don't know if you – I don't know how effective Quez Watkins would be back there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, mm -hmm. it takes a special <clears> – it takes a special person to be able to get out there and return that punt, man. You know, because, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I know if I, if I was back there and I know that I got at least 10 guys – coming with a full head of steam, coming to take my head off, and I got to sit up there and watch this ball in the air. To me, I like running backs back there, you know, because it's not like a, a kickoff. You know, you're operating in close quarters. I kind of like running backs in that situation, like the Westbrooks. Now, Deshaun yeah. Jackson was, was unique. But, you know, to me, I always felt like running backs were really good at, at, at punt returns. So I see Boston Scott being a little bit more active in there. I would like to even see him a little bit more active. And the kickoff return as well, just because I like his style of run. Yeah, yeah. He sees that first hole when he explodes through that hole. I think that's kind of what we need. Um, Kofi has taken some ferocious hits back there. Like, he, he yeah. is, it's like, it's like, I mean, if I was in the National Football League, that would be the last position I would want to play personally is punt return because you know you're going to get hit. And then you got to think about, like you said, the guy's coming full steam. You're going to muff that thing. You're going to be thinking about everything. My birthday next week, uh, how my kid doing at school. You start thinking about all type of stuff. We you saw people running at you. So. Man, everything. You, you, you're hoping that the gunners are doing their job. Please block this, man, because here they come. You know, it's a tough position. And, and you know, really, do you expect them to take it to the house, though? All I know to do is hold on to it. Just hold, don't, don't turn it over. Let the offense go. You know what I'm saying? As long as you're not fumbling, all right. You know, all right. Because I, I mean, <laughs> who, who, who's the last solid kickoff punt guy that we've had? Sproles. West, Sproles. Yeah, Sproles. Yeah, it was Sproles. Yeah, it was Sproles. But, but, again, but, but a running back. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right, right, right. I was just about to touch on that. And, and, and definitely closer to that Boston Scott style of guy that you like. You know what I mean? Smaller, you know, you, you got to really be able to tackle him. And he's also one of those guys, one cut, and he's potentially gone. So, yeah. yeah. But I, th I think I think if you found a guy that can get you some positive yards consistently, maybe not scoring, it'll put the offense in a better position starting off. But Covey yeah. hasn't been fumbling, and the offense is, what, top three in scoring, so you really can't complain. So you, you know what I mean? The one so, re so really what you need is like a Reno Mahe type back there. Right, 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 right. Because a lot of people don't re – now, Reno Mahe was <laughs> nice back there, man. Like he, you he, was, expect, he was nice. No, he was solid. You like he, you never thought – you didn't expect for him to take it to the house, but we always got the ball out of at the 30, 35, 40-yard line, man. I mean, you know, that's pretty consistent, man. He was consistent. That's very consistent. That I have you in the topper echelon in, in today's NFL, you know what I mean, yeah. a punt return and net yardage or something like that. Yeah, so I never thought about it like that, man, like 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 how, how solid running backs are back there. Because when you yeah. think about it, you know, it's usually like a wide receiver. Some guys even have cornerbacks back there. So you're right. But I say Quez because Quez did, you know, uh, um, he did return punts in college. So okay. that's probably why Quez do got that four three speed. But do you want to lose Quez to a hard collision because he's your number three yeah. wide receiver? I don't want to lose <laughs> you know Quez I mean? to a hard. Yeah, I would much rather him be the guy that we could take the top off of the defense. You're starting to see him get more targets in the games right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I would not want to lose, and I definitely don't want to see the Slim Reaper back there anymore. You know, oh like, my like, god, like, like, like I don't, I don't need to see that ever, ever again. I would much rather give me Boston Scott all day. Yeah, I tried to erase that one from my memory bank at that Washington game. I was there. I tapped the dude next to me. He was like, was that Smitty? He's like, no, it wasn't Smitty. I, it couldn't be. I'm like, look at the replay. I'm like, man, y'all want to see, I don't want to going to see that again, man. That was just that was just foolish. So um Jack Stowe's the guy moving forward for tight end. Um, how do you see him being involved in a game plan in this Sunday night matchup? Let's talk a little bit about this matchup, you know, before we wrap this up and enjoy our Thanksgiving. So we do have the Green Bay Packers Sunday night football. 
this, in my opinion, is is I, I feel like every game is almost a must win until we get like a three game lead and really get mm-hmm. closer to locking this up. So this is a team that we should beat. Aaron Rodgers has shown some fight in certain games. We have shown to be vulnerable in the run. So what do you think the plan of attack should be as far as offense and moving the ball in this one? I think offensively, you know, we're going to have to cut down on the mistakes offensively just with all the penalties, with the sacks as well, you know, Mm because this offense goes as Jalen Hurts goes. And you want to make sure that we don't – I mean, we gave up three sacks last week against him. You know what I'm saying? I think against the Washington game, I think they only gave up one. But you gave up three – averaging right now, they're averaging two to three sacks a game. You know, so I would really focus on making sure that we protect Jalen Hurts. But, again, I think that – as far as oh, getting the tight end involved into the game plan, you, it's, it's business as usual. You know, yeah. I think that, you know, this offense has so many different facets that, you you know, even if he's you being used as rub routes or whatever you need to do, I mean, j- get him the ball. If he's open, get him the ball. You know, and then I think also that if we continue to run the ball as well, get that run game going. I mean, that's that's always been our recipe. The RPOs has always been part of our game plan. I think defenses, you know, they go back and look at that Tampa Bay game um, last year, and you start to see how they played us with the run uh, RPOs, and they were mm-hmm. very effective as a defense, you know, because you need to have that backside defensive uh, end come crashing, then a backside linebacker or or safety coming back, you know, so they got to be disciplined. So, you know, I, I think that once you get the run game going, and then you know the, the rest is history. You know, I think it still continues to be business as usual. I don't think we need to change our game plan just because Dallas Carter is in the um, lineup. From from an offensive line from an offensive lineman standpoint, how confusing is the RPO? Because we seem to get hit a lot with those um, ineligible guys downfield. Like like Kelsey gets, you know, when he gets like five yards deep, they seem to throw that flag on us on us a lot. Now, is that because? Kelsey doesn't know if it's a run or a pass because we do so many RPOs? Well, he doesn't know it's a run or a pass just because the run was called. So he's right. just going, you know. But what, what has to happen is Hurts needs to get rid of the ball quicker. You know what I'm okay. saying? Like, you you just got to get it, get my read, get the ball out of your hands. Because as an offensive line, you don't want to tell your offensive line, all right, hey, because you have to come off on the ball. Because what if it's a handoff? And, and because we out there short-stepping, and not coming off the ball, then the, the run gets stuck. So you have to come off the ball to create movement. But I think that Jalen just has to get his read and get the ball out of his hand a little quicker. But there's nothing that the offensive line can do to change it. Like, I think you can start to try to stay flat a little bit longer. But, you know, that's that's I think that that messes up the timing of the play, the way the play is designed. So I think that just Jalen, make your read, get the ball out of your hands a little quicker. Yeah, I, I wonder about that because, you know, I see Kelsey with the – like, what did I do? And it looks like he's doing his job when I look at the film. So I'm thinking it got to be the play and the way it's, the way is the way the play is called. And, and keep in mind now, every week, this is something that teams are going to send to the referees. You know, hey, 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 these guys mm. are getting downfield. So it's a point of emphasis. I think that they just need to keep business as usual, you know, because, I mean, it, it wasn't called as much in the game before. So just keep this business as usual. Some teams will say, hey, they've been flagged. And then, you know, hey, these guys are getting downfield. It's just a point of emphasis that the teams are sending to the referees. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to this Sunday night matchup, man. This will be our tenth win of the season, um, and, and 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 one of the better seasons in Philadelphia Eagles uh, history. I'm looking forward to see what it uh, what it holds for us. So you know that concludes what we got, you guys. You know Thanksgiving is tomorrow. You cook. You cooking something, Trey? Man, I don't cook, dude. Like, I, you know, <laughs> like well, you know, say like, dude, we order these turkeys from Oprah, dog. Like Oprah. Oh man! Put this list together a couple of days ago, a couple of years back, and they she had this smoked turkey from this farm somewhere. I don't know, but the missus looked it up. So we every year we order some turkeys, and then like my so mom it, it, it come. Hmm? Uh, it come I'm sorry, they come cooked. Cook? Oh yeah, it come already smoked. Everything you put in the refrigerator. Then once once Thanksgiving hit, pop it in the oven. Bam! Best turkey I've ever had, man. I'm talking about they do a good job. I have to send you um send you the um uh, send you the people uh, who they do it, and then uh. I just called my mom about some um some uh, a recipe to cook some greens, but I don't cook like that. Not not to do Thanksgiving dinner, you know. No. Nah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. could do you, you could do the simple stuff to get by, but Thanksgiving dinner you gotta get the yeah, experts yeah, for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to get the experts for that. You know, I mean, I I, I can put together a meal for us tonight to starve for the night. But right, right, right. <laughs> 
Hey, man, I hope, yo, Trey, I hope you have a good Thanksgiving. I hope you drink some good wine. I know you are, man. And we definitely going to be back next week, man. All right, cool, my brother. Have a good one. You too. All right.